Hello, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to the Bring Me to Life podcast. It's Silamon here. Today's episode is going to be a really intimate, special one with Shannon and I. We actually recorded this while we were away in Maryland. We took our Zoom recorder with us, so you will notice the sound is a little different, but we wanted to take you all to the cabin with us. And we talked about the mo- the mother archetype in a way and how we're all birthing projects and creative expressions and there's a lot of really good stuff within this conversation between myself and Shannon i hope you stay tuned if you are listening on spotify please rate us and uh, wherever you're listening to if it's possible to rate us we would greatly appreciate that otherwise just Thank you so much for being, for existing. Thank you for being alive, here with us right now. Thank you for waking up and shining on with us. Enjoy this podcast. Welcome to the Bring Me to Life podcast. It's time to wake up and shine on. Hey, welcome to the Bring Me to Life podcast. Glad to have you all here as we are recording this on our Zoom recorder. So it is Mother's Day and uh, we've been talking a lot about storytelling the last few episodes. And uh, we're here visiting Shannon's aunt for Mother's Day weekend. So maybe just talk about the mother archetype. Uh and share a love for all the mothers out there. Mm, Mother's Day. Such a bittersweet day for so many people. Some people uh, get to spend the day with their moms. Some days people, or some Mother's Days, they have to be away from their moms. Like your mom, she's up in Michigan. We don't get to see her as much. No, but uh got to talk to her on the phone today. Called her on the way to uh, see your aunt. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was good to hear from her. Um, and hearing her voice, it's kind of like, it's a lot like connecting with her. We don't get to see her, but, uh, just hearing her voice there, there was a good connection. So, yeah, it was cute to to check in with your mom. She was talking about her podcast and, uh, I'm excited for her to have an outlet and be able to, to share her podcast more. Yeah. Seeing my aunt was very interesting too. She was getting really into just, uh, taking apart the world around her and examining it and it's an interesting phase to be in yeah 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 so there might come a time where your mothers will it's happened with you and your aunt like you're Mm -hmm. just saying today it's happened with me and my mom before where they question what you say um, something that you have an intuitive feel about or something that you might you know see on a video or you you research and you learn about and you try to share with your family and they consider you a conspiracy theorist (laughs) or you're going crazy and years and years down the road talk to you and say you know what now that i'm seeing this in a different perspective in a different light you weren't crazy Mm. You you saw this ahead of, you know, what everybody else thought was crazy. Yeah, I think that's a wild perspective for so many of us to have. And I think that's becoming more and more common, honestly, in a lot of ways with the Internet and the ability to share stories and information through time and space and just like break down the realities in front of us that, you know, like, Things can be put together into wild stories and perceptions and the news can do that and movies can do that. Like think anything they can do in a movie represents something that they can co-create to make us believe something has happened. Like our minds wrap around that. So storytelling is such a wild and powerful thing. And yes. sometimes I think we often take for granted how easy it is to access information these days, like we were also talking about how, you know, it was within our lifetime, people would leave the house and people didn't hear from them for days. Like there wasn't a phone and a text message and 
all these yeah. ways to reach out to people to, to share the story. So I'd storytelling say, is such a powerful thing. Yes. I feel like at the when we were first learning about the world, it was the end of the era of not having cell phones and the ability to email and be on the internet just in general. So we do see from a, a wild perspective into a new era where everybody can be so connected so quickly. And it is it can be a double-edged sword sometimes, but I'm grateful it allows me to connect with my mother a little bit more and, you know, share stories like you're mentioning and uh, just, uh, you know, it's sharing love and connection. And, you know, shout out to Mother Earth um, for having all of us, you know, graze upon the nutritional <laughs> things she provides for us to live. Mm. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, the story of the Earth is just like such a wild thing. And just thinking of how, again, going back to what I was saying before, like how much information we have here on earth to like understand it in different ways. And it's just a unique time to be in. And I think celebrating the the energy of the mother and the energy of the storyteller and the person who like, and it's not just the mothers, it's the fathers too, but that energy of parental guidance or like elderly guidance that's supposed to be like, educating us but like as we all come together as a society we're like just educating each other really and like Mm -hmm. being able to witness each other's different um versions of similar and very different things at all times and yeah i don't know today i went down a portal thinking about that too like we're watching um technology share stories with us through time and space something else that uh my aunt showed us was like this X Files thing that yeah. was a story, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, I think that's where I was getting at with like. It was an X Files compilation of clips that really showed exactly what I was learning about and what's really going on with some of the, you know, messed up things in the world. Right, and I think that's why I'm kind of um, stuck on this idea since we were talking about storytelling. I know you want to talk about like the energy of like the mother and. Um, earth being a mother to us but i think something's coming through here about how stories are shared through our media and even through different generations because like your mom has also shared some different um tv and news things with us that has just like awakened in her world in Mm -hmm. these past few years and seeing the x-files thing is very um interesting because that means that people whether it was for entertainment purposes or not, were attuned to channeling something. And even if just, you know, the creation of that TV show and its idea concept could have, you know, sent us into different timelines where that actually started happening. Yeah. Which I think is just why it's so important to, like, think about the media we're creating and the the stories we're creating in our entertainment. Yeah. Hmm. Yes, because what we think about, what we send our energy to, regardless if we're trying to, you know, bring something in or if we're trying to let something go, um, if we want something or we don't want something, whatever it is, whatever our mind is on is what's going to be attracted because... Uh, thoughts have a kind of energy to it and you know so it is very important I feel like a lot of things have gotten out there so that we could put our energy and our thoughts into to make something more powerful like they could be releasing some of these conspiracies because having everybody's minds on it will bring that about um, Do you think that's what The Simpsons was doing? It's maybe. Who knows? Who knows? But I know that they've done experiments where people have blessed food, blessed water, and it didn't really matter 
what kind of food or where the water came from, um, as long as, you know, with reason. But when they invested their mind into blessing the food, blessing the water, it really changed the structure of it. Because most saints are made up of water. Water is in everything. And Dr. Emoto did studies on having intentional thoughts and words into into water and it really harmonized the structure when you thought positively, um, when you're focused on love and harmony and you know, stuff like that. So I was just confirming what you what you're saying. What you focus on will be what manifests. So together, if we can focus on a better world together, um, really visualize and act towards that, we can create a better world together, which is, I think, a lot of what we do is, is trying to help focus on a better world. Mm. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, I've been really trying to program myself to uh, intake... Um, more inspiring content. I can't even say like positive because some of it is like, you know, it's balanced because it it's, right, makes me balance. think. There's a balance to to everything. Right, but I've been I've been tuning into some different um, mindfulness classes and um, working through some different programs right now, and a lot of it is talking about you know aligning yourself with a frequency and a story that aligns with the version of you you want to tap into. They don't even say, like, your best self anymore because I'm not trying to make this too woo, but it's like... Right, there's no best self. There's just what you feel drawn to. A lot of them are talking about it being, like, a twin self, like a version of you in a different reality, like a doppelganger almost. Well, because all timelines exist in the same moment. It's just a matter of, you know, tapping into it because I don't know if you've heard... Breaking news alert. Time is not linear. It's just like, yeah. And you can choose the different timelines you pop into. Now, sometimes that takes time. And sometimes we are, you know, programmed so deeply with different programs that want to limit us or make us feel like we have to be a certain way or we live in fear of what other people think, which has been coming a lot or coming up a lot for a lot of people and just that's really what stops us kind of in the end. And I feel like uh, some of this has come up because I know where we went from talking about like motherhood energy, but like we are the energies that our mothers and those with wombs are feeling when they're creating us. So whatever stories and energies they're feeling or the energies around us are feeling when they create us is often like, programmed into some of our biggest fears and the way we respond to realities. And I think it's even more interesting to watch now as so many people are, you know, like waking up and channeling their focus to these different areas, how much they want the next generation to to be open-minded. But yet there's still a lot of us that um, live in different versions of fear. And something that I'd been channeling on a lot lately is so many people are doing such similar things these days, like the energy of just kind of um, copying each other or attaching one to certain um, ways of doing things because they see some sort of outcome, especially with social media right now. Like, oh, this artist is doing that or this musician is doing that. So I need to do this and I need to be like that. And like, there's this fear of people copying us, but there's also this like desire to just like, um, just slightly alter the way things are to do it in a version that feels more in alignment for each individual. And I think where I'm getting at is like part of what I channeled was like a fear of wanting to create um, a platform or a community or a series of offerings that brought like, you know, peace and joy and like creativity and inspiration and like all the energies that I would think and like a mother or creator would want to bring to reality and, but being like, well, there's already so many, you know, projects or communities or opportunities like that. But really 
no two creations are going to be the same. So like the more we're able to share our unique stories and really tap into that, it's going to do more to help humanity. Like you were saying, like focusing on how to just um, choose the timelines we want to be on and tell the stories we want to tell. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Um, I like the analogy of, uh, if you've heard of it, of, like a, uh... It's like a train leaving a station and you get to pick which train you go on. But like they're all starting from the same place. Like all the versions of us that happen after this moment that we're all sharing right now. Like we're all at the station together right now. From this point forward, there are many different trains leaving the station but they all started from the same place. But as they pick up speed, they slowly go further and further, which might make it a little bit harder and harder to get to that specific, you know, train from where you are. But being able to harmonize and focus on a specific path um, and destination that you're going, you'll be able to to land on that. Um, but I do, you know, share a lot of. Similar beliefs as, as what you were sharing as well. Um, there's something that there's a lot of actually a lot of things that were in you know inspiring and, and coming up for me, um, but I really wanted to share that train analogy and uh, I'm not sure at this point what <laughs> else was coming up, but I'm sure as you continue to talk, uh, they will come up for me. Hmm. Yeah, I think the train analogy makes sense. It's like you got to pick which ride you're going to get on and at least follow that through, but also follow your intuition. You know, things are going to make you go in different directions. But I think where I'm getting at, too, is just like watching the different um, versions or interpretations of the mothers and the creators and the people uniquely leading their own stories. And they're all waking up mm-hmm. in... I think sometimes humans are afraid of learning from others or being too much like others or Mm -hmm. um, just like a perception from others. But I've, I've noticed this even more as I've seen different humans that are really afraid or frustrated with AI because it's learning from what others have and what others have done or, you know, have asked it to learn. And I've been having, like, a lot of mixed feelings and just trying to, like, you know, reflect on what the AI experience is like for me. Because sometimes it's useful and then sometimes I can see where it's, like, frustrating to people to, you know, have their property be manipulated in that way. Mm -hmm. But essentially, as humans or as any sort of sentient beings, we would grow faster if we could really, really release the fear of others being inspired or similar to us so that, like... There can be learning and growth Mm -hmm. and essentially that growth can happen faster without each person having to, you know, create everything from scratch or trial and error and, you know, waiting to wake up and, you know, turn themselves on to the certain ways of thinking Mm -hmm. instead of just allowing ourselves to have those unique experiences because we're going to come to it in different ways. Um, Like watching our parents figure things out that we had waken up to like decades ago um but if we can instead allow ourselves to like really just step into you know the train or the evolved version or self or like whatever you want that vision to be without judgment or ridicule and allow others to do the same like because you're doing it and allowing yourself to do it yeah like the more i dye my hair purple and wear my sparkly glasses and my wild outfits people around me start doing the same and they're like, oh, you inspired me to do that. Like, I I didn't feel like I had permission from the universe to do it until I saw someone else doing it. And I'm just like, wow. So I start handing out, like, imaginary uh, permission slips from the universe for things because so many of us need those. It's like a story we've built into our brains that we need permission to do something. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it is important that even if you think you're doing something similar to somebody... Um, that it is with, you know, our own kind of outlook on it. We all have a different, even though a lot of us might be similar, we all have something slightly different. 
and and that's something beautiful to offer to the world and you wouldn't want to just have one person holding down a specific thing and then something happens to them and then there's a gap okay like well, what if only one person in the whole wide world could teach meditation right or if like you know if if that were true and then some happened to them where all of a sudden they were just like and this has happened this is a thing that has happened to people that meditation teacher all of a sudden says hey guys everything i've been teaching for the last 60 years is wrong <laughs> and don't believe anything i've said burn all the books i've written uh that like was mind -blowing anything that. you've anything i've taught you is meaningless now like we we don't want that if especially if you have listened to somebody and you resonate and like this is something that i believe as well and then that happens and you're like i that's doesn't resonate with me i still totally believe all of those things um you would want like another person to be able to share a uh, space and that other person might just be you know like on the timeline that does you know have whatever those energies are and some people choose different different walks like like there's a lot of people who find themselves back in a certain religious community of some kind and like dedicate themselves to that very specific path yeah. and everybody's different people are going to feel like different paths and frequencies are good for them in different times and in all honesty like seeing a lot of different paths and practices for you know both religious and like creative paths it's like no two people make a painting the same way Not no too. two people make a song the same way like yes there's some basic rules and understandings of things but many people break those as well and yeah. still are doing fine yeah and in one book that we we often kind of bring up is the artist's way mm. and something that i felt was true that we learned in that book was Ideas aren't something that we possess. Mm -mm. They're something that uh, we have ownership of. It's something that we channel through us and allow to express itself through us. And a lot of times that idea or that inspiration might channel through multiple people. And to be upset at somebody for creating something that has a similar idea and vibe to it is i believe and you you might disagree with me i still love you but i believe that's kind of ridiculous because creativity is beautiful and if you create something similar to somebody it means you're on the same wave you're on the same vibration you have like a similar thing and and maybe you connect and maybe you could collaborate and create something beautiful that you know you might add something to something that really makes it stand out that the other person wouldn't have thought of, and, and that inspires them to add another thing. And then all of a sudden, there's a, a beautiful masterpiece. You know, who knows? But it it really is important to just create and flow. Um, I'm not saying just make the same exact painting as somebody like don't take that same painting do the same colors do like everything the same like it still will probably look different you know mm -hmm. well it's the thing is like each person's gonna have a unique spin to it yeah. from the pigments in their paints to the brushes they chose to use the size of canvas they tried to, or maybe it's on paper maybe it's on a rock like everybody's version of something's gonna be uniquely different because uniquely it was different. captured in a different time and space. Yeah. And Things can be the same, but different. Like you could listen to three people read the same meditation script, but each person's voice is going to make it a little different. Each, each way that person shares and speaks and adds different tones and pitches to the way they share that meditation is going to connect differently yeah. with each different person. Yeah. I might really connect with one and, really love it and then somebody else might be like that one was horrible i need this one right. like that person's voice did not make me feel relaxed and i'd be like oh really like that was the most relaxing one for me yeah. and i think that's what i'm getting at is like each unique way we share a story or create something matches differently with the person receiving it right i would say 
you know, as a person who creates stuff and a meditation um, teacher, creator, guide, whatever, don't, I want to say, don't just, you know, go to my YouTube, take one of my meditations, upload it and pretend it's yours. But yeah, definitely don't do that. Uh, but like, if the words inspire you and you create your own version, that's beautiful. Um, and if you do take somebody's thing, like try and email them and ask them if it's okay and make sure to tag them. Um, because, you know, even though ideas flow through us, if it flows through you and you take the time and energy to let it flow through you, I feel like you should be recognized, you know? Oh, definitely. So, like, everybody freedom wants- stuff is, everybody deserves to be recognized and people want to be seen. So, if somebody takes the time to let that flow through them, they should be recognized, you know? Oh, definitely. I think what I'm just getting at is like, each person has different representations of things. Don't ever just like fully copy and plagiarize something from right. someone else. No, mm-hmm. no, no. But like, think of how many different people created statues of uh, like Aphrodite, and each one is different. Yeah. And each depiction of even like George Washington or Abraham Lincoln or something random is also different. But yeah. there's like many different versions of those beings and those right. souls and those experiences and the perceptions of them mm-hmm. that's the alley i was going down no no i totally understand <laughs> and i totally agree like as a meditation person even as like if i'm created a piece of art and somebody was inspired and created a different kind of version of that you know i would i'd feel kind of honored in a way and um you know especially if they reach out to me and say oh you inspired me to do this uh um, what do you think of this? What do you think of this meditation? I've had people do that where they're like, I like your meditations. Like, what do you think of this one? I'm like, that's freaking awesome, dude. I am proud of you. Um, yeah. So I think I think there's a good understanding. If, if you're worried about creating something similar to somebody, as long as you're not just straight up taking it and posting it as your own, you should totally do the thing. And if somebody gets offended that you created something similar, or maybe you had the same symbol, or maybe it was the same type of fucking bird. Sorry for the F-bomb, but I'm trying to make a point to you. Like, let's all work together. Let's create a beautiful world together. Right. But don't you believe also that, you know, it's important for us all to learn from others' trial and error so we don't have to keep, you know, waking, waiting our turn? Like, think about the concept of how there's people out there that are mad that certain generations and people are getting out of paying their student loans. Do you think that we should all just be, like, forcing each other to continue mistakes we've already learned from? I, <coughs> well, if you get this cough out. Good enough. Got worked up there. Trying to get really worked up. And I think I know where you're going with it. <laughs> You good? Mm-hmm. Okay. I just, I just want to make sure I had a little... Yes? Okay. So, um, now I forgot. I was getting real riled up about learning from other people's mistakes so that we don't have to keep doing yeah, the same no, thing I mean, over and over. Yeah, yeah. I think investing your time and energy, being mad for somebody having life easier than you or having a different opportunity that, than you had... Uh, you there's better things to invest your time and energy in i don't blame you and i love you and i'm grateful for you being here but i would just say let the past be the past let's focus on what we can create together and hope that those people that don't have to slug away and suffer like we did mm-hmm. hopefully they can Put that energy into something better. Yeah, it's important to just like allow space for that kind of growth, I think. Um, Part of what it sent me in that direction is I'm thinking about, you know, there's been different times in my life where I've felt like different elders in my reality maybe didn't want me to succeed or didn't um, have a story in their mind that would allow me to succeed because... um, 
maybe they wanted me to have it as rough as them growing up. Right. Or, you know, um, I've had different people in my life tell me that um, in my path, just like, I, I think I'm better than them or something like that. And it's like, no, I've just like learned from different ways of being and living in my own experience, even that have, you know, set me in directions that just don't align with certain decisions or perspectives anymore. And that's okay. I don't yeah. think badly upon them. I just chose not to be on that timeline. Yeah. I think that I have also been guilty of trying to, you know, compare experiences and sufferings. Um, but uh, I do believe that, you know, we all go through shit in our own lives. Um, and I don't think that we should compare who suffered the most or just focus on, on, on our suffering. Um, a lot of what the Buddha was trying to do was find a way to get rid of suffering. Hmm. And that was just through like a balance of life. And, uh, and in in those teachings, it was saying that we ourselves create the suffering, and there is a way that we can alleviate that, um, and uh, just send love to your brothers and sisters. We shouldn't have to suffer to live and be successful. And follow our dreams and do the things that bring us joy as long as they don't, you know, disturb others. So, you know, I, I would like the generation after us to have have a better, you know, I wouldn't want to leave the world a worse place. I wouldn't want people to suffer more than I did, you know. I, I want the world to be a better place. I want people to be able to spend more time creating and focusing on just joy, you know, mm -hmm. enjoying <clears throat> life. Yep. Yeah, I think that's something that not enough of us do in our story, though, is sometimes we're so worried about the stories of others or the stories around us or the stories, you know, we make up for ourselves that we forget to put joy in there. And while listening to a lot of these workshops I've been listening to lately, um, a big reminder has been to, you know, not visualize exactly how we want something, but instead how we want to feel. And they always remind us to, like, make sure we feel joyful and happy because we don't want to feel, you know, like some people be like, I want to feel like, the most well-known novelty chef or something like that. And it's like, well, what does that feel like to you? Like, does, is there really a feeling to that? You know, is, is that chef busy? Is that chef, you know, like able to sleep at their home at night? Does that chef have a family? Does that chef, you know, sleep in a different hotel every night because they're traveling the world? Like, instead of focusing on being a chef, like, how do you want to feel? Because you can be a chef and also, you know, like, work a, a different job and have a family and be a chef at night and things like that. Um, and allowing yourself to feel joy and to feel the tastes of the food you're preparing in your mouth and the smells of it and the different senses of like what it feels like to be that chef or that painter or that musician or carpenter or whatever it is you want to do, race car driver, like astronaut, like what does that feel like in your body? And not putting, you know, like the outcome on it of like, I have to be a chef to receive this money or to have this house or to, you know, all these things. And it's been really kind of like reminding me that Oftentimes, especially when we start, you know, diving into the manifesting world, so often we want to write this specific thing of how we get there. And instead of writing the how, write the story of how your different senses feel in that moment. So having joy and having happiness and, you know, my nervous system isn't shot, <laughs> which I feel like so many people don't think about um, how 
tense our nervous systems are and how much we strive to have certain realities or to be the perfect this or to be just like that. And instead remembering that like your joy can bring others joy. So not having to be or try to fix everything in that's something so many of us have a hard problem with. And I'm one of those, like there's so many of us that unknowingly try to be people pleasers because that's what it feels like we were raised to do or how we feel like we're, you know, like serving others. And yes, you can serve others in a way that you add contribution to the world and how we make others feel is a huge part of that. But like, how do we want to feel as well? And, um, we kind of stemmed off of this in the beginning by talking about like our mothers. And again, like what I'm saying is however the person feels when they're creating you in those early, you know, months of your DNA being generated, like those deepest fears and those programs that we're decoding are things that the generations before us felt so deeply. And that's why it's so important for us to hold space for them to change and to, you know, treat our elders with gentleness as frustrating as different ones can be at different times, you know, because they're representing what the world threw at them at that time. But to see so many of them wake up with us now, and again, because the internet and technology is so potent that they can see the things that we saw then in real time. And like, they're starting to like decode it in their own ways so that the next generations don't have to, you know, have the same trial and error. Yes. I believe we are at the pinnacle of a point, a historical point in the nonlinear point of space time where we're dealing with a lot of generational stuff that's happened. Um, Pain and experiences that are really painful and hurtful for people. And a lot of us want to create a better world at this point, I believe, and don't want to see a lot of the suffering of others. A lot of our family members are starting to, to wake up to, to the world and the way it works. Um, so we're at a point where, you know, we're healing, the generational experiences as well as birthing a new kind of reality. And we each are birthing our own experiences in a way. So like if you look at the the archetype of the mother, um, you know, birthing, uh, providing nutrition, Um, taking care of something while it grows up. Um, That's kind of what we all do with our, uh, with our art, with our projects, with our businesses, regardless of, you know, if you're a male or female, if you're a masculine or feminine, um, we all have aspects of both. And... So we're all kind of like mothers in a way where we're all birthing things. And I do want to say thank you to Shannon. Maybe we could take a moment to all send love and gratitude to Shannon for helping birth um, and be the mother of the Bring Me to Life podcast and the, and bring me to life in general. Um, and for all the things you've done, and I know you have a lot of experiences that you've gone through with that mother archetype that you know maybe one day um we can hear some of those experiences and uh, send you love for but let's all take a moment to send love and, and healing and gratitude to shannon well thanks that's an interesting turn of events but i will take it yeah mother's day is always a bittersweet holiday as I said before because so many so many of us have uh just issues and difficulties with the idea of a mother type or even a father type um but it is interesting how you you mentioned like we do all birth projects 
and we go through these different phases and yes we have the masculine and the feminine energies in us that balance it and um yeah there are so many beautiful things that go into birthing projects thank you thank you for recognizing that but yeah i've had different journeys with it i lost my mother really young i lost my grandmother who was like my mother figure both of them actually very young so i've always had interesting connections to the mother archetypes um i've almost had the opportunity to be a mother archetype and that's been an interesting experience reflecting on souls and how they come and go from us and connecting with others that have experienced that happening and so many people actually do that don't talk about it because it's such an interesting experience to almost be a mother if you know what I mean like it's almost there you almost do and then there's a different timeline that happens all of a sudden and you go through these shifts and turns and that experience is just not in the same alignment so that's a an interesting perspective too on the timeline jumps and how we just, you know, end up on different frequencies sometimes. Mm -hmm. Somewhere there's a frequency where all of us that have had um, spirit baby experiences are with those beings in different times and space. Or those beings just, you know, are um, resonating in different times and space and are like angelic beings. So, yeah, life's just so interesting. Mm hmm Let's send, like I said, love to you and to everybody who's experienced hard times, um, you know, being a mother or almost being a mother. And we all, I think, mother or not, um, almost mother archetype or not, we all have things that we feel a lot of shame for. And that can block our energy centers. It can block a lot of the things that we want to bring into this world. And I just want to say that you don't have to feel that way. If you do, it's probably because you're a good person. And you deserve love. You deserve to, you know, be healed. You deserve to let go of that shame. You are a beautiful person. And things always happen for a reason. So to anybody feeling all kinds of those feelings, we love you. And things will get better. And we're all going to create a better world together. And we're all going to take care of our mothers. We're going to take care of Mother Earth. We're going to take care of our projects because we are the mother of them. And I love you all. Grateful to, to be here on this podcast, the Bring Me to Life podcast. My mother has a new podcast <laughs> called Heartfelt Conversations with Diana. She does. And she's sharing her story and her perspective and how she connects with the world around her. Yes. My so. mom... Also lost a child when that child was two years old, ironically named Shannon. And she talks a little bit about that in her podcast. That's something I don't really talk about is I had a sister who left the earth before I came into it. And my mother shares a little bit about that. And her podcast it is, she says in the intro, it's not religious, but it is faith-based. Um, so she does talk about Jesus. Just uh, a warning for those out there who are interested in listening. Um, but she has a different perspective. And her podcast is a lot about broken roads. She shares a lot of trauma that she went through, which I'm learning a lot about. And it's very powerful. And she just wants to help people to heal, you know, from from those painful experiences. Shannon and Lacey birthed a new podcast. Ben, it's been a very fun and unique podcast. It is very different from your mom's. So very, very different. Very different. 
me and Lisi both come from um, very goblin-like backgrounds. Would you, would you say ratchet? No, I would not. Not I would quite say ratchet. It's um, it's just silly. Like silly. it's just me and Lacey's very open perspective on being an artist and birthing paintings and communities and um, what it's been like being uh, in the world as creative adults without parents and support for so long. And um, we're going to actually interview a lot of artists here soon. We've talked about um, different um, community support and the shadow work that goes into art and being a creative. We um, had some episodes of the ups and downs of being an artist in this day and age and our connection to the world around us. And there's a few missing episodes that I'm sad about because we were doing deep dives into um, being neurotypical and neuro not <laughs> mm-hmm. normal beings in a lot of ways and what that spectrum looks like for so many and how they connect to the world around them. So yeah. very well, different, but it is a very unique birthing process and um, have been really enjoying having that space for artists to uh, reflect with. Yeah. I haven't quite figured out why things mess up like that because it is frustrating i've written so many things i have really like breathtaking footage that people would not believe and yet for some reason it gets destroyed or deleted or just it doesn't exist it's on a different timeline and it's frustrating but there there's a some reason i just haven't figured it out but we're all in this together like keep please don't let that disparage you Things from continuing to create because if you stop many more things will be in the graveyard than just the thing that got lost you know so don't let that stop you there's plenty more things for you to create you can create a, a, a version of that thing and it's just what was supposed to be for this world maybe you'll look back in the future and be like wow i'm glad that happened that way <laughs> Who knows, dude? You don't know. One of my favorite podcasters that I listen to um, regularly is Jessa Reed. And there's most most episodes. She's like, this is re- take three, maybe <laughs> four. Yeah. I wish you could have had the stuff from the first, <laughs> you know, one and a half because it was potent. Yes. And now you're on round three. So if I sound rehearsed, it's because I kind of have just said this three times. But you're supposed to get this version. Yes. Um, so it's just a version they're <laughs> supposed to get. It happens, dude. We all... We're all there with you, so please keep freaking going. Think about how many times I've tried to upload my current book before publishing it. I'm probably on round like 15 because for some reason every time I save the file, there's one tiny glitch and I'm like, okay, people are just supposed to get this version whenever I finally get it all together. So this is your message to not give up. Um, Thank your moms and the people who keep learning and the timelines you've chosen to to be on because you know you've had to make decisions yourself and you've created things um there is a there is a silver lining like you're getting experience if you if you are writing this thing and for some reason you're like on to the third one like you're getting experience doing that you know so it's becoming more natural and uh yeah so like there is there's a you're you're gaining something from it yeah, sometimes I get frustrated with how many times I have to just shift little things. And I'm like, man, this is like take 20 on uploading this thing. And then I think about how many paintings I've made and I've made hundreds. So, you know, like my 20th painting probably wasn't nearly as good as my 200th painting. Yeah, you're you're getting better at it. It's getting easier, getting faster. Um, what's meant to be is what meant is meant to be. But, you know, what's to come is part of co-creating with the universe. So don't let, you know, things disparage you and stop taking action on things because then life's not going to get better. You just don't get anywhere. You don't get Um, anywhere. Speaking of birthing things, you and Billy are birthing a thing or made a thing? 
I made a commercial, and if anybody's listened this far, I believe you deserve to know that I am releasing a, a video that I created with Billy. We did a commercial for a adventure journal that I created um, and published, and uh, him and I are creating more. Like we wanna, we wanna create more uh, stuff together, and you know, eventually uh, a movie. Eventually, You'll really dope freaking series. We want to we want to get on the big time, bro. We want to get on Netflix. We want to get on Amazon Prime. We want to get on one of those big things, and like and you're just gonna keep trying. But you got to start somewhere, and you got to make little clips. We got to make. We got to start somewhere. So we we created a little commercial, um, and I'm excited to release it. We're gonna release it soon. I'm sure anybody listening to this, um, unless you listened. In the first few weeks of it, of this podcast coming out, um, if you listen after, it's available now. So go to my Seelum Unofficial YouTube, <laughs> youtube.com slash Seelum Unofficial. You're so hype. I know. I messed up my link. <laughs> I am frustrated. <laughs> but I'm not going to re-record this podcast. It is what it is. It is. Seelum Official. YouTube.com slash Seelamon official. Good job. You have a YouTube. It's Fantastic Shine. There's not much on it right now. I'm working on it. I'm slowly rebranding all of my stuff to just like Shannon Shine or Shannon Shine official. Because people don't know how to spell Shantastic. It's been a thing for the last decade. So I'm choosing a new evolution of me. Shannon's evolving. Like a and... Pikachu going into going into the next level. Mm, What's yes. up with Pikachu? Uh, right at you. All right, I'm rising up. Rising up. <laughs> um, and we're all rising together. So thank you for listening to the Bring Me Luck podcast. Um, loved how the mothers out there, regardless if it's Mother's Day or not. Thank you so much for all that you do. Um, please be kind to your kids. <laughs> be kind to everybody. Be if, kind to everybody. There's you... with all the things to be in the world. Be kind. Yes. And uh, we're growing together. Thank you. Please, if you haven't, rate us on the platform that you're on. Spotify, you can go to our profile. There's a rate section. Just please rate us real quick. Rate us, follow us, do the things. Tell us how that you actually listen to this podcast yeah shout out to billy who's been saying he's been listening to our podcast i like when he sends us pictures of it on his tv yes it's like oh my friends do care i love when friends care i love when they want us to know that they have been listening and that they care sometimes it makes me really nervous too but that's what, <laughs> that's what being a human is because we're so vulnerable all right time to go have a vulnerable vulnerability hangover i love y'all thanks for Waking up and shining on. Bye.